Hello, it's Ricardo, and welcome back to Elite Dangerous Beyond. And with the game evolving, as it is, what with its iterations of updates here and there, and quality of life fixes, patches, hot fixes on the patches, and so forth, I thought it'd be a good idea to explore what people would like to see in the game, and also what they'd like fixed or what they'd like changed. Now, I've been recently having a look through some of the forums on Facebook, and in particular, the Xbox One Elite Dangerous forum had a really good thread on it recently, where people said, hey, what would you like fixed? What would you like changed? Are things changing for the better? What do you think? So, let's take a look at that. So let's get started with one that's quite close to my heart. What about the controversial topic of ship transfers? Yes, folks, ship transfers. We've had those for quite a while now, where the idea is you get to a station um, or a planetary base that has a starport, and then you are able to summon your ship to you. So you might have a ship over in Lave, and you're all the way down in, I don't know, Wu Ginag, for example, and you think, I quite fancy to have my Cobra Mark III all the way down there with me. And for a fee, you can click on a button, it calculates a time of travel that is going to take you a couple of hours, a couple of minutes, whatever, uh, and then charges you a fee for it to come down. And that's all well and good, and I think that's great. A lot of people have been thinking, well, what if that ship transfer would be instantaneous? And I think you've got to sort of think about whether this game is a simulation or it is just an arcade game. For me, it's more of a space simulation. It's a space trading, fighting, exploration simulation. I think there has to be some sort of level of authenticity, if that could be a word really applied to this, given it's science fiction. But of course, there should be um, the ability to have your ship transferred to you, and we've got that. Um, however, should it be instantaneous? I don't think so. One thing I think would be good is to have the ability to send your ships to a particular place. So, say for example, again, we're at Lave, good old Lave, and we want to send one of our ships, say a mining ship, to a planet that we know has got some good mining. Let's say, oh, I don't know, um, Lissetti, for want of argument. It could be anywhere. You should be able to say, right, within a given range, because you don't want people sending ships all the way to Colonia, do you, right? No matter how much it's going to cost you. I can send my ship within a 300 light year range to whatever planet I want. And then you can get there in your quicker ship, do a few missions to recoup some of the cost, and then you get your ship back. I think that'd be quite a good idea, don't you? Let me know in the comments. Uh, let me know what you think about that. So we're talking about ship transfers. Do you think... Ship transfers instant, or do you want to keep them the same with their time limited and also with cost? And also, would you like to see a facility where ship transfers could act as a push, so you could send your ship to a certain distance, as well as there being a pull where you can summon a ship to you? This might track really well with the um, inclusion that we hope this year of fleet carriers, where players can have their ships set up as a fleet carrier, as opposed to any of the multi-roles that come up. That would be a good way of introducing this into the game, I think. But before we go on to the next one, hit that like and subscribe button, and also that notification icon, and that'll let you know when I'm putting more videos of gaming, Elite Dangerous, Subnautica, Battlestar Galactica, all those games I play on my channel on YouTube. And you can keep abreast of what's going on as well when I do post videos. Next up, engineers, that controversial topic. Is it too grindy, or is it all right as it is? Personally, there has to be some sort of time served, some sort of a grind to achieve these fantastic updates that, for example, let you travel double the light distance range with your F FSD, or incur more damage with the blasters or lasers or cannons or whatever you've got, or even just have lighter weight modules so again you can travel further. I do think there should be some sort of grind there, so love it or hate it, I'm against some people who have mentioned this within the community that they want engineers changed. One thing I would say however, and that was also mentioned in some of the comments, that it would be good to sort of, again, 
following on from my previous point, have these ships sent to an engineer once you've already been there. Like, and with, you know, send your ships to, to places that you've already been and scanned. Great, brilliant. So with an engineer, you rock up to an engineer, you should be able to say, right, for a fee, I'm going to send my cutter all the way over to um, Felicity Farsia, and I can then pay remotely, and you'll be charged more to pay remotely, to have that cutter engineered up to a certain level, providing you can send the materials as well. So that whole transfer of, of items, materials, um, even transferring modules, and also, you know, able to send materials, again, possibly with these fleet carriers, to the engineers would be good. And that would then give an extra level on the sort of like the pinned blueprints that we've had in game for quite some time. Hey, let me know what you think. So what we're asking is, are the engineers too grindy? Do you wanna see some changes there? And if so, what changes would you like? Do you like the idea of being able to send your ship to an engineer that you've previously unlocked and discovered uh, and then do remote engineering and send additional materials you like to that station, there'd be a time limit and also an additional cost for that. But that could be a good way of more integration into the Elite Dangerous fleet carriers and also some good changes to what we've seen in Elite Dangerous as well. Let me know what you think. So, so far, some good talking points. Next up, Elite Dangerous Law. And what does everyone think about that? We've had some good in-game set pieces, what with the community initiatives that been out last year in 2019, especially around the Golconda, where we thought that's a really good story there. They found this ship floating around, it asked for help, then the Empire and the Feds got involved and said, hey, we'll build you a station aligned to us, and now we get an in-game rare ability. And it begs the question, what about when Elite Dangerous releases a book under the Elite Dangerous name, you know? Is that canon? And if so, why can't these things be integrated into the game? Yes, we all know about Raxler, and we'll come on to Raxler later on in this video, no doubt. But what, what, what about, you know, all the, all the good novellas that have come out? Um, why can't some of that story be integrated into the games? And not just make it a based on? That would be good as well, whereas you can say, right, I'm going to go out and I'm going to play a story arc. Hey, fantastic and it triggers once for every commander. Or you can then go back and reset it. Worthwhile. So, you know, hey, Elite Dangerous, in-game playability of lore is what we're talking about. I think that's a good one, especially if the game was going to go, you know, um, to a subscription service, which personally I don't think it should really, not this stage of the game. It is going to go, you know, to have some sort of like buyable content. Granted, okay, we know about this, they've mentioned this. But is, is, is it going to contain some lore? Is it going to contain some, some advanced gameplay? Who knows? And let me know in the comments if you're still with me. Now, of course, you may remember that this all was tried in game before, but then other payer factions came in and killed Salome, uh, if you remember that, back a couple of years ago and completely wrote off the game uh, with that sort of in-game narrative. So some things have to be tweaked there, but in all, let's face it, it could do with a little bit of extra punch this game, couldn't it? Ah yes, good old space legs. That old chestnut, eh? God, love it or hate it, there you go. People have always wanted to go walking around their ship. And quite a few fan-made demos have been made in regards to people walking around planets that we saw a couple of years ago. And then, you know, in-game look-around tours around some of the other model models have also been done. These have been great. What will it actually do to the game, though? Will it slow things down? Will it mean we'll just get another Star Citizen clone? Or the one that actually works and has been released to production? I don't know. That could be an entirely new set of ge gameplay in itself, or perhaps the next iteration of what Elite Dangerous would be in, you know, 10 years time. Who knows? I mean, what they're trying to do with Star Citizen, I think, is something short of remarkable. If you've got a machine strong enough to play it, um, I think even mine would probably struggle. But in all fairness, I think what we've got to consider as well is that if space legs do come, what's it actually going to bring to the game? So, you know, what value will it really bring us? Will it slow us down in tedium? And with that, with space legs, also we had a good demo of atmospherics as well recently, where you showed someone flying around um, a planet 
around a, a space station or a land-based station that we've seen on all the planets and that was fantastic and it had r wet rain and weather effects on that as well and that was good and I think that that would be a good thing to bring into the game I think eventually um, again though it would be a good set piece to have unless there were missions attached to that would specifically leverage the atmospherics uh, of a planet like that um, what would the point be? You get a randomly generated planet, a bit like No Man's Sky, I suppose. Um, you know, or something a bit more graphical uh, to fly around. Perhaps go and find a research outpost that's been lost or hidden or covered by undergrowth or a rock slide, something like that. Who knows? Here's something I made a video about quite a few years back, about admirals and kings and the whole sort of like progression rank system within the Imperial and Federation um, factions, really. Um, so, you're an admiral, where's your fleet of ships? You're a king, where are your loyal subjects and your bodyguards? Shouldn't you, as an admiral, if you're in trouble, player v player, be able to call in some of your ships, remotely piloted as drones, to, as to assist you? Same with being a king. When you rock up to a PlayStation, um, PlayStation, what am I talking about? When you rock up to a space station, why doesn't it say, Greetings, your exalted royal highness. We welcome you and your bodyguards and your loyal subjects. Why can't your loyal subjects also act as a sort of a bot wing, as it were, to make that get into that stage of being a king or an admiral, just that little bit special, as opposed to just unlocking the corvette or unlocking the, you know, the, the imperial cutter. Because that's all it's really good for, as far as I can see. Um, all that additional grind. I mean, you might get a few bonuses here and there on trade, but I wouldn't say anything drastic, really. Um, so, you're a king, so what? And you're an admiral, so what? Exactly, so what? And I think we need something a little bit more to embellish that um, aspect of the game as well. Okay, let's talk about mining. Oh my god, that's been all over the forum since the last January update and hotfix where they said it is the supply and demand now for certain materials like void opals, etc. and high temp low temperature diamonds and all these things that people have been making utter bank on um, for quite some time. And you've got to think, well, okay, fair enough. So they want to sort of limit the amount of credits that are perhaps in the game and make it a bit more realistic. But there was nothing really wrong with it. It actually made mining worthwhile. You know, for, for a period, I have to say it, because um, before I never really got into mining. Then they brought the whole sort of like um, in-game set pieces with, you know, yeah, the asteroids blew up and it was that great sort of thump when your charges went off. Well, that was cool. That was cool. Okay, make it a little bit less lucrative, perhaps, than some of the stupid in-game dynamics that had you sort of like getting 1.6 million for a ton of void opals. Set it at something relative like 600,000 and then just keep it as a level state um, these sort of things I think are open to exploitation when they update things the code is inevitably gonna go wrong uh, and people are gonna end up you know having all those credits and all that those materials taken off them whenever there is an exploit that happens like that within Elite Dangerous that you know you can turn around and say well you hmm, we shouldn't have done that really should you and that big shiny cut with all that gear we're gonna take off you um, Perhaps an in-game penalty should be applied to those players that do use exploits and things like that. But anyway, back onto mining. Do you think the mining aspect of the game has been made worse? Is it being made better? Are you going to continue mining or what? These are the questions we need to ask. Um, so yeah, exactly. So a few points, a few thoughts there on, you know, the current state of the game of Elite Dangerous. Um, you know, with the January update of 2020 coming in and changing a lot of things and some bug fixes and causing other problems, what with screen stutter, is Elite Dangerous a game you're still playing? Or are you out there playing other games? And if so, what games are you playing? Let me know. I'm looking for a damn good game to play. I am playing Subnautica and I enjoy it a lot. Anyway, I've been Ricardo. Thanks for watching this rant on what should be fixed in the game. See you soon. Fly safe.